Hey everyone, welcome back to Clinical Physio with me, Khalid Maidan. In today's video, we're going to be taking you through OBUS test and modified OBUS test. Each of these tests are looking to see if our patient has any increased tension or tightness in the lateral thigh. So let's go through them. So the patient position and the therapist position for both at the start are the same. Our patient is going to be side lying on the bed and if possible, we're going to bring them right to the edge uh, of the plinth. As a therapist, we're going to be standing behind the patient. Now, the leg being tested will be the uppermost leg. So our patient is lying on their right side, therefore it's the left leg being tested. In this video, we're not going to demonstrate how you do the test on both sides. We're just going to show you to you on our patient's left leg. And the reason for that is we don't want to slow your video down. Of course, in clinical practice, you should always compare the two. So let's go through the test. So first we're going to show you Ober's test, and this is done with our patient's knee in a flexed position. So therefore, we're going to bring our patient's knee into increased flexion, and the handling to maintain that position is where we swoop underneath so that our hand is resting on the medial knee. And you can see that our patient's distal tibia has been uh, placed in between my biceps and my ribs, and that allows me to quite comfortably support the joint and the rest of the leg. Our other hand is going to be placed on the lateral pelvis, and that's because we want to stabilize the pelvis so that we don't introduce any increased trunk side flexion. So therefore, we want to make sure that the test is accurate. So here's how we do the test. First of all, we're going to bring our patient's hip into an extended position. From there, as the therapist, we're going to perform a little bit of a squat. We're going to dip a little bit in order to bring our patient's hip into increased adduction, whereby the knee moves downwards over the edge of the bed. So just to show you that again, increased hip extension, and then the therapist dips their own knees in order to bring the hip into increased adduction, so the knee drops over the edge of the bed. So that's Ober's test. So modified Ober's test is done with the knee extended, whereas Ober's is with a flex knee, Modified obers is an extended knee. So the handing is going to be slightly different. We're going to place our patient's knee in an extended position. Again, we're going to swoop underneath and hold on to the medial knee or the distal medial thigh. But whereas before the patient's leg was tucked into my side, in this position we can just have the tibia and fibula supported over the forearm and that keeps the knee extended. Same principle in terms of the other hand is going to be on the lateral thigh. And once again, we're going to bring our patient's hip into extension and we're going to do a little bit of a dip of our own knees in order to bring the hip into adduction, dropping the knee down over the edge of the bed. One more time, we're going to bring the hip into extension and drop the knee down over the edge of the bed to bring the hip into increased adduction. So that's how we perform the test. Now a positive result would be in terms of the range of movement. We should expect that our patient's hip can go beyond neutral uh, between abduction and adduction so that we can achieve an increased adduction position. So therefore we can bring, if this would be uh, neutral, we can bring it beyond the neutral to come into more of an adduction position. If we can't, so let's say we try and bring the hip down and we only reach here, which is actually looks like it's into abduction from my position, then that would show that the reduced range of movement is a positive outcome. And it might well be that increased tension or tightness around the lateral thigh is preventing more range of movement. So this would be a positive result whereby we cannot bring our patient's hip beyond neutral abduction adduction. So guys, some pro tips to mention in terms of this test that you need to be aware of. First, when do we use the test? Well, commonly we'll use this test when our patient reports increased pain or a feeling of tightness along the lateral thigh. This may very well come on when they're running. You often hear of runners saying, oh, I get pain down the outside of my leg when I'm running. Uh, and if you have a positive result in the test, you may hear some physiotherapists say, oh, that means your patient has tightness of the ITB, the iliotibial band. Just be careful with that terminology because the ITB is not actually a contractile structure. It's not a muscular structure. Think of it as a piece of rope. The rope may be under increased tension, but it is because 
something is pulling it on either end, which causes that tension. And if we think about it in terms of the lateral thigh, it may be that other structures, such as the TFL, the tensor fascia lata, for example, are pulling the ITB, which causes that tension. So it's not due to the ITB necessarily being tight, it's due to other structures which are being tight, which may well cause the reduced range of movement. Moving on, one thing to be aware of during the test is internal rotation of the hip. Make sure that when you're doing the test, you don't bring the hip into increased internal rotation, as that will detension a lot of other a lot of structures around the lateral thigh. So what does that look like? So if I'm performing the test like so, we bring the hip into extension, but instead of dropping my own knees as the therapist, I just move the knee down relative to the hip. You might be able to see that my patient's ankle is higher than the knee, and that means that the hip is in increased internal rotation. Instead, during the test, you want to make sure that when you're bridging into extension and then bring the, the whole leg down, you're dipping your own knees to come down as a whole. And that will make sure that you don't bring the hip into increased internal rotation. Next point is about the quadriceps. So you may find when you're doing the test that you can move the whole of the patient's leg into more extension when the knee is extended compared to flex. Let's just go through that. So you might come back this far in the obus test and your patient might say, oh no, my lat the outside of my leg feels fine, but it feels really tight at the front. And that might be because the quadriceps are being stretched or tensioned in this position. And therefore you can't bring it into as much hip extension. However, when we have the knee extended for the modified obus test, you may well be able to take the hip back a lot further into a lot more extension and a consideration to make is that in this position, the quadriceps are not stretched, they're under less tension. So if you find that that's the case, or if you find that your patient complains of tightness in the front of the leg with the flexed Obers test, it might be because of quadriceps tightness. Other things to mention. So if your patient complains of pain here at the greater trochanter, rather than the lateral compartment of the thigh, it might be because during obus test, you are stressing the gluteal tendons. And therefore, if your patient has a gluteal tendinopathy or greater trochanteric pain syndrome, then you are irritating those structures. So therefore, be aware of the difference between pain in the lateral thigh versus pain solely at the greater trochanter. If they do have pain just local to here, it might not be because the thigh is tight. It might be because they have a gluteal tendinopathy or greater trochanteric pain syndrome. Finally to consider is the femoral nerve. We know there's a lot, but it's all important stuff, guys. So the femoral nerve. So when we're bringing the hip into increased extension, particularly with the knee flexed, we are tensioning the femoral nerve. So if your patient complains of pain again down the front of the thigh or the anterolateral thigh, it might be because of the femoral nerve being under more tension. So what can we do about that? We can use other tests to differentiate that, such as a pro knee bend, to see whether or not our patient's symptoms is due to lateral thigh pain or something like a femoral nerve tension. So guys, just to finish this video off, do we use OBAS and modified OBAS testing clinical practice? Well, we use it sometimes. We might use it a couple of times a year, for example, but we may not use it as often as other clinical tests in order to investigate tightness of the lateral thigh. For example, you can just have your patient supine and do a passive hip adduction test, which you'll do as part of your routine exam, which can investigate the lateral thigh tightness. And also you might be able to use other tests such as your resisted test or functional tests to determine more information about the hip as a whole. And your OBAS or modified OBAS doesn't therefore add a lot more detail in than the other routine tests that you'll do during your examination. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you again soon right here on Clinical Physio.